In the blink of an eye, a weekday commute into Paris transforms into a waking nightmare. As a crowded train barrels down the tracks completely out of control, its helpless passengers can only brace for the catastrophic impact to come. The 75-minute ride from Milan to Gare de Lyon is packed with the usual assortment of weary commuters. For many, it's a daily commute, but today's trip is about to make history for all the wrong reasons. The train glides through its route smoothly, approaching one of its usual stations, Le Verde des Maisons. However, it no longer stops there due to a recent change in the summer timetable. As it passes the station, something unexpected happens. A passenger in the second carriage suddenly jumps up and pulls the emergency brake, bringing the train to an abrupt halt. They then run out of the carriage. Behind the train controls, driver Daniel Sowlin finds himself grappling with the fallout of the emergency brake activation. He heads to reset the brakes between the driver's cabin and the first passenger car, along with the conductor, Jean Beauvais. Sowlin finds the lever stuck and grabs another nearby handle for leverage, but the brakes are still locked when he returns to his cabin. The driver now thinks there is too much air in the pneumatic brake system after the emergency brake was activated. He believes letting out the air manually will fix the problem. Instead of calling the engineers like they should, Saulin and Bove manually release air from the brakes on all seven passenger cars. When Saulin gets back to his seat, everything seems to be working, and he heads towards Gare de Lyon. But what Saulin doesn't realize is that he has just triggered a chain of unseen events, starting with a malfunctioning brake system. More than a half hour behind schedule now, Saulin is ordered to skip the last stop ahead of Gare de Lyon. They pass Maison's Alfort station without slowing down, a crucial decision that would only come to light later. Meanwhile, at Gare de Lyon, an outbound train has been delayed on Platform 2 because its conductor hasn't arrived. Its front carriage is right next to the main staircase to the underground platform, so most passengers found seats in that first car. As the outbound train waits, even more passengers than usual board it, crowding the carriage with frustrated commuters. Saulin's train headed for Platform 2 is now speeding down the slope towards Gare de Lyon at over 60 miles per hour. A warning signal urges the driver to slow down, signaling the upcoming descent into the station. But when he applies the brakes, he makes a horrifying realization. They are barely working, only slowing the train down from 60 to 28 miles per hour. Soon, gravity overpowers the brakes, causing it to accelerate again. With the 300-ton train now hurtling out of control less than half a mile from a packed station, Saulin begins to panic. The stage is set for disaster. But there is still hope. To prevent collisions, railway staff had set up advanced systems to automatically send incoming trains to empty platforms in situations like these. But what happened next would override those failsafes. The driver frantically alerts the control room. Stop everything, I've got no brakes, triggering a high-pitched alarm that echoes through the control room center and driver caverns of all commuter trains nearby. Instantly, the alarm activates a general closure protocol, which grounds the entire network to a halt. Every train in the immediate vicinity of Gare de Lyon is stopped, awaiting further instructions. The protocol also cancels the preset track diversion. Even though traffic signalers know there's a runaway train, they have no clue which of the four trains headed inbound has lost control because Saulin has failed to identify himself. Realizing the approaching catastrophe, Saulin leaves the cabin and rushes the passengers to the rear carriage to brace for impact. But this also means that he is now out of contact with station control. Meanwhile, at Gare de Lyon, the outbound conductor has finally arrived. But the high-pitched alarm has disrupted all communications, leaving him and the driver unaware of the impending danger. At 7.08 p.m., the runaway train barrels down into the station and its passengers brace for impact. Officials try to alert everyone, but the runaway train is less than a minute away. With just seconds left, a call to evacuate the stationary train on Platform 2 goes out. The conductor and some passengers manage to jump off in time 
but the outbound driver bravely stays on the train to relay the evacuation message to passengers as Sowlin's train bullets at full speed towards them. The runaway train collides violently head-on with the waiting commuter train. On impact, the locomotive jackknifes up and plows through the cars, tearing the aluminum shells of the carriages to shreds. The scene is devastating. The collision leaves two stationary train cars crushed like a tin can while the engine of the runaway train is lodged into one of the other carriages. Onlookers watch as the force of the crash sends trains' cars buckling upwards into the station ceiling, leading to horrific scenes. First responders arrive within 10 minutes, finding civilians doing their best to help in an overwhelming situation. The passengers on Sowland's train manage to escape with minor injuries, but the more than 60 people who were on the park train suffered serious injuries. Many needed to be cut free and hospitalized. Tragically, some can only be freed by leaving limbs behind. As rescuers pulled the trains apart, Parisians wondered why all safety protocols could have failed so catastrophically and what ultimately led to the tragedy. An investigation tried to answer these questions, focusing on why the brakes failed, why rerouting measures didn't work, and why passengers were left unaware. Initially, a terrorist act was suspected. Suspicions grew when investigators found that the main brake pipe valve had been closed. This cut off the flow of compressed air, effectively rendering the brakes useless for all carriages behind the driver's cabin. Despite the terrorism angle, Investigators believed only someone with detailed knowledge of the braking system could have done this. They quickly focused on finding the person who pulled the emergency brake, asking the public to help identify them. Eventually, a 21-year-old mother came forward. She was on the train to pick up her three kids from school. But unaware that the train no longer stopped at Le Verre des Maisons due to the revised timetable, she impulsively pulled the emergency brake to prevent her young children from waiting alone. Her actions were found irresponsible, but not malicious, and she was fined for pulling the emergency brake. However, a closer examination of an earlier interview with Salvin would unearth crucial details. After the emergency brake was pulled, he tried to reset the emergency brake at the rear of the first car placing his hand on the main brake pipe valve for added leverage. In doing so, he accidentally closed that crucial valve without even knowing it. But this, in turn, raised questions about how exactly the train was set back in motion. Despite the failsafe mechanism designed to lock the brakes when the main valve is closed, Salin managed to restart the train with the assistance of the conductor by unlocking each brake on the carriages. He had no idea that with the main valve closed, there was no way to refill the brake system with air. This meant that only the first carriage of the eight-carriage train had braking power. Yet even with the limited brake capacity, investigators found that critical opportunities to stop the speeding train were missed. Station controllers directed Salin to bypass Maison's Alfred and head directly to Gare de Lyon to compensate for lost time. That station, Maisons Alfred, is on flat ground just a few miles before the steep descent into Garde Lyon. If the driver had not been told to skip this station, he would have had the chance to discover the brake problem and safely bring the train to a stop by simply cutting power. Adding to the growing list of human errors, Saulin neglected to use the train's electric brake. He claimed that electric brakes were seldom used by drivers due to their unreliability and excessive wear on brake pads. So, it didn't even occur to him to use it. When he activated an in-cabin alarm, Salin didn't identify himself or his location, which confused the controllers trying to manage multiple trains and figure out which one was in trouble. Things got worse when Salin left the driver's cabin and the only means of communication with station control. So, when he didn't respond to their calls, the situation was even more chaotic. The general closure procedure triggered by his alarm turned off the pre-programmed routes, preventing the train from automatically diverting to an empty track, which led to the collision on Platform 2. As the investigation continued, it became clear that the real issues were human errors, poor judgments, 
and ignored safety protocols. The National Rail Agency responded to the tragedy with a safety overhaul, including advanced intercoms for direct passenger driver communication, an exclusive emergency brake for drivers, intensified training, and a modernized radio network to strengthen rail safety. The aftermath of the collision left a city to mourn the deaths of 56 people. It's believed the fatalities were all passengers on the waiting outbound train. Four years after the collision, Saolin was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to four years in prison with three and a half years suspended. He served six months. The guard who delayed the outbound train's departure was also convicted of involuntary manslaughter and received a two-year suspended sentence. The station controller was cleared of the same charge. The state-run railway was also cleared but ordered to pay most of the civil damages brought by survivors and families of those killed. The Gare de Lyon crash exposed the human cost of carelessness that led to one of Europe's worst train disasters. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.